I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 22nd of January, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today is Sunday. It is Anna's birthday, so happy birthday to her. Of course, we've already celebrated her birthday. That's what we did today. You see this a week later, so it's a little bit weird saying it, but happy birthday to her. Feliz cumpleaños. Today is Sunday, like I said, and we are spending the day. Uh, I had a bit of work I needed to do, uh, really working hard on the videos. We're having all kinds of internet problems with our Claro service, and that's causing a lot of problems for us. So we've been struggling with that. Everything's taking a lot of time, um, and uh, and we're trying to get uh, some new new equipment working. It's just it's just busy. Um, but then this evening we're gonna go out and hang out. So. That is what we're gonna do. While I'm doing today's update, I'm actually gonna head into Veracruz. Now, in previous episodes, I've shown you Los Altos de Veracruz, and I'm doing some research to understand Veracruz a little bit better. And uh, so I think, I think I have this down. So if we go to the, to the west, which is this way, go down there, that's Los Altos de Veracruz. The, the ground actually goes up uh, and it sits above the rest. So Los Altos is Spanish for the heights, right? So it should be straightforward. If we go down this way to the east, the first part of Veracruz has a uh, placard out, which we haven't shown on the show yet. I will do that on a, on a future episode. That is, uh, I believe, Heroes and Martyrs of uh, Veracruz, and that is the west, uh, the eastern part closest to the city, uh, the most touching, the Barrio Sutiava. This is Sutiava, but not the Barrio Sutiava. A little bit of traffic out here on, on Nicaragua 14. Uh, so we're gonna turn the camera around now. I'm gonna show you where I am. So you can just see down at the end down there, that's Los Altos, past those cars a bit, down by that sign. And then these are just, uh, that is a taller, that's a mechanic. And then we've got some houses here. There's actually some cute houses hidden back. These are kind of rural. Oh, and then this is the street I'm gonna go up. Now, when I came down here, that's uh, Leon is down the road that way. And this is the Barrio Sutiava down kind of where you see uh, the white buildings. There's a number of buses on this road over here. Not sure why they're all parked, uh, but so this appears to be kind of the middle of Veracruz. It's not Los Altos and it's not Heroes and Martyrs. It's just the middle. And we're gonna head up this diagonal road, which of course has no name, uh, and gonna explore a little bit. Now I do, before I do this, I'm gonna cross the road and show you, this ditch is really extreme. This is a dangerous sidewalk. I walk this at night sometimes and look at how, like, I mean, you're not going to fall in and die, but you could break a leg. This is a real, and that, the, the, that, there's not very much light out here. Uh, and like the closest thing we have to a street light, that's an LED solar light right there. And look, this is so you could drive across this to get into this garage right here, which is actually probably a really nice property associated with this over here. But uh, this has turned into, because of all the, the water coming through the ditch, it, this is supposed to be a road. I don't know what's happening here. It is, it's a complete mess. I don't know. So we're going to head up this way and explore. That is, uh, that is our project for today while I tell you about all the things we did. And it's, it's kind of a fun day. So we've got some stuff and let's head on our journey. I didn't realize how many buses are here. I saw one leave. I thought there were three. There were at least five. I have no idea why there's so many city buses sitting out here. No, oh, there's actually a shop here that I didn't know about. What is that? This? Oh, hold on. I'm going to show this. This is a very large pulperia here. I had no idea this was here. That's the thing in Nicaragua. Always interesting things hidden on every street. Just pay attention and there's something lively, something interesting everywhere. And this, of course, is Veracruz. So this is a very very nice area. This is kind of the middle, the part that people don't think about. So this is a less desirable area, but it's still, these are nice streets, very calm, very safe. So today, uh, what we did uh, for Anna's birthday, we were gonna go out to the Italian restaurant that we like to go to, uh, but they are closed because I said today is Sunday, that is incorrect, it is Monday. Because it is Monday, uh, they were closed and uh, this is a, this, oh, this is a nursery. Okay, so this is actually important. I'm gonna note this on the video. Dominica has been asking me where the nursery is because there's supposed to be a nursery in Veracruz. And we kept saying we couldn't find it. It's because it doesn't actually sit on the highway. It sits back. That is very clearly a nursery, Vivero. Uh, so that is, uh, that is where it is. I have found it and that was pretty easy. And another pulperia. Buenas tardes. And so uh, we wanted to go out for Italian. We went there, they were closed. Oh, we have a cute yellow house here. And, uh, 
Instead, we went to Sua, which is always open and always good, has a very large menu, always does a good job, always has something for everybody. So we did that uh, and had a nice dinner. It was very warm. It was a very warm evening. Uh, out but uh, but dinner was very nice and then and this is cool like we've been wanting to go out and do something interesting but normally we go dancing sometimes we just go out for drinks and tonight finally dominic has been trying to talk us into this now i have to say i don't know exactly where i am this is like a full-on intersection like in the middle of veracruz i have no idea that it looked like this back here this is really interesting actually i'm going to show down this is kind of down to the right we got some nice houses here and uh people walking down the road and uh this is very very different i'm not sure where this truck is going i don't know if he knows where he's going these are really pleasant neighborhoods now that's the highway down there in front of me oh the truck stopped i don't want him to back up over me and really cute suburban style houses at least here on the left very very cute um so Dominic has been trying to talk us into doing karaoke at Gekitos uh, for a while. And it's called Gekitos. There are two bars owned by the same place. They're part of the, the group of bars with bar 23 uh, that we go to for dancing, but they uh, uh, we go to Gecko sometimes. I've shown them on the show. Uh, that is where we go for uh, just live music. They don't, I mean, you can dance there, but it's, it's not a dancing place. It's not a club. It's like a live music venue. That is a cute little spot it almost looks like something out of like disney world oh little kitty over here very interesting part of the neighborhood i'm glad we're walking down here today i'm gonna have to identify this on a map for you okay this house is fantastic i was not expecting this and they have this is kind of new i think they're going to put in i can't see what you're saying i think they're going to put in something there and then that's a new sidewalk and that is a really large really beautiful house back there with a lot of new trees that are planted oh that is for sale oh my gosh wow somebody could have a gorgeous very modern mansion here in a really nice neighborhood wow so cool uh you saw it here first folks that's how you find that's how you find amazing houses you walk neighborhoods and you figure out who's got a for sale sign up that is the one and only really good process I don't know what's back there, but they have a really interesting French drain going around their telephone pole and a cute orange car. Uh, so uh, so Geckos is live music. Gekitos, which just means little geckos, uh, is a much smaller venue and has karaoke every night. Seven nights a week, they do karaoke. And Dominic has been like, I don't know if they're going to have English stuff. I don't know if there's like, I, but it's, it's like a whole bunch of people in there drinking you get really drunk and no one cares how bad you are. You just, you just get out there and sing. And so we're like, well, I guess we can give it a try. You know, it's, uh, it'll be something interesting to do. So, so we did it. So we went to Gekitos and uh, it's in an old colonial building. It's right downtown. It's right next to Barbaro. Uh, it's in an area where it's hard to get newer buildings. Um, and you, you actually go into old bedrooms right like it's a it's an old colonial house you're actually in the bedrooms of the house and uh what is that are these uh and and so it's a really awkward or interesting i guess depending on how you look at it way to sit and um and what they do is they apparently get their karaoke like from youtube or something and they just put it on tv screens all around the bar because you're not sitting in one big room it's not like in the u.s and then they walk around with different microphones to different rooms, but only one person sings at a time and it goes to the entire bar. So it's a really, when is are they? So it's a really interesting way to do karaoke that you don't necessarily see the people singing, but everybody hears them. And it's still a shared experience and you're like performing for strangers like in the US, but not up in front of them like in the US in private rooms, more like in parts of Asia. Okay, I have no idea where we are. This is some interesting stuff. So we've come by a bunch of normal houses. So we've got a pulperia. Hopefully I can turn on the screen. Yeah, we got a pulperia here. And then this giant, I assume this is just a house. It could be a hotel, but it doesn't have any business markings like it's a hotel. That is a really large multi-story house. And then we have some really cute houses over here too. And the style on this is really interesting. So I, I can only imagine this is all one. 
I love their walkway here. It's really gorgeous in their, in their garage. And then this style almost makes you think of like a church, but I'm really confident this is just a private residence uh, with all this agave out front. Just fantastic. Wow. I consistently love this neighborhood. So, so many cool opportunities. I have a feeling this place on the right is unused, but probably quite nice uh, if it was to be fixed up. It's got interesting walls and stuff. I have no idea. There's just a wall on the other side. That's why I'm not showing it. And this is a relatively quiet area, which is nice. There's a lot of streets back here. I didn't really realize just how many intersections and different roads were here. Oh, I know where we are. Okay. So we are coming out into Heroes, Heroes and Martyrs. We're going to go up and show that, like I said. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Salud. All right, we're now walking away from Nicaragua 14, for those who are wondering. Uh, and this part of Veracruz, I believe this is the oldest part. Uh, and if you look down this way, let's see if we can show it down this way, goes into the Barrio Sutiava. This is where uh, uh, Veracruz starts merging into the Barrio. But this boulevard that I'm on is, to the best of my knowledge, the original boulevard of Veracruz and what it's all kind of built around. So we're on the western, uh, eastern edge. Buenas tardes. And oh, are these saguaro cactus? I've never seen anything like that down here. That may actually be, or just something that's very closely related or kind of looks like it. Some of these are pretty injured, as you would expect from Segura. That one took a knife for sure. Wow, but they're alive. I don't know that I would choose to decorate with those, but interesting, interesting. So, uh, so we went and did this karaoke and it was actually a lot of fun. Um, it, it's funny, the locals tend to sing, sing Mexican drinking songs, so they're very slow. We have a, we have a, a pharmacy hidden back here, uh, and very lilting, and it's kind of like a Mexican version of American country. It's definitely where culturally it overlaps, but for some reason they sing that here when people are doing karaoke instead of the music that you normally hear here. And it's very slow and very sappy and very depressing and very drunken. And you're like, okay, that's interesting. Um, hello, Dougie. And uh, we have more streets up here. We're not gonna explore all over today, but it gives us a, this is some stuff we've gotta come and check out in the near future. We're gonna explore more and more. Ooh, forward here would be interesting. Now this road is in really rough shape. I am not gonna walk, well, no, we're gonna walk down this. Why not? So, uh, I did, this is pretty funny, I sang, and we were, this was our experiment. We wanted to know what you could sing. So we decided to go for something that we knew I could perform uh, without having any preparation, because remember, we didn't plan on coming out for karaoke, and with just seeing if they could pull up a really obscure American song. And so John Michael Montgomery sold the Grundy County auction incident from something like 1992, uh, we requested, and they immediately just whipped it out, put it on the screen, and that's what I sang. And it got quite a reaction. I don't think anyone has ever sang fast, upbeat American country music in there before. And people were pretty amazed that such music existed and could be sung in karaoke. Uh, so that was, it was fun. Um, and then I also ended up doing this. This is a cute house over here. It could have a whole bunch of gardens. I have a feeling no one's living there right now, but it's got lots of potential. Uh, I also sang uh, um, Straight Tequila Night by John Anderson, which is another one I know. That one is much slower and kind of fit more with the vibe and, and no one really paid much attention to it. But it gave us what we needed. We now know that we can sing pretty much anything from anywhere if those songs were available, uh, which, is, which is pretty exciting. So Dominic has been wanting to do karaoke and we're always looking for something different because, you know, living here, uh, there's a, a certain lack of variety that we're used to from the United States and finding ways to fill that is pretty important for us, uh, especially because part of the lifestyle here is going out and being out a whole lot more uh, than we're used to. 
and if you just go out and do dancing all the time for one it really hurts my foot um, but also we get a little bit tired of that we're looking for variety we're looking for something different this place is really cute wow beautiful walkway lots of gardens hard to know what's back there but these are some nice places like i said these are we're coming by what i believe are the oldest at least the oldest lots if not the oldest houses in in veracruz we are walking back towards Nicaragua 14. If you didn't pay attention to my walking path, we will be, you can see at those white fences in front of us is the Colegio down there. Another little bit older house, not so fancy, but lots of nice space, big, nice yard, lots of potential down here. And then this is really cute. And there's a lot of this in Nicaragua. I'm hoping that the camera is going to be able to get this playgrounds in the middle of the boulevard. And it's a, it's a decent amount of playground. Now, it's very, very old, but you see these used, and they're, they're all over uh, in, like, this part of the city. You will find these little playgrounds nestled in all over. Buenas tardes. And, uh, and, and it kind of gives, like, each neighborhood has little playgrounds. And, of course, when we lived in Texas, we had lots of playgrounds, too. But the distance from home to any of the playgrounds for us was pretty good. We lived right in, the, right in a spot that was, it was pretty perfect for them. Um, but in most of the U.S., you go a really long way. You have to drive to get to one. We've got a couple of roads here. Now i got to show this. This is an open storm drain I'm coming up on, and the only thing protecting it is a tire. That's pretty funny. Uh, so we had a really good time. The karaoke was a lot of fun. Oh, I'm just going to show this. I've never walked through this park before. we got some really cute benches here. And uh, obviously this could be kept up better. But this is actually really cute. There's a little path going through, some really attractive trees. And then there's this little memorial park up here. And this is what I was talking about. So I'm going to bring you over there and show you that memorial. But I'm also going to show we have some... This is a... Uh, some houses here, and then this yellow wall is a very large pulperia. It's like the main pulperia of the neighborhood. And this is a really cute house over here on the left. Big yard, lots of gates, all kinds of... Veracruz has a lot of really great flowers and stuff. And this one is for sale as well. I think I may have shown this one from another angle on the show before. And we are looking at the Colegio Pureza de Maria. This is the girls' school here in the neighborhood and this is this is the heroes of veracruz so this is the marker for the community heroes of veracruz which is where we are uh and this is for um those soldiers who fell uh during the war who came from here and a little memorial park for them so really really pretty and important um and it is the head this is the starting point of the entire veracruz community not just heroes of veracruz but this is the main boulevard so that is, uh, that is where we are. I'm going to turn around because now the sun is pointing towards me and uh, I can be on the show a little bit today. So overall, it was a lot of fun. We're going to be going back to Gakitos on a regular basis, I think, uh, because that is uh, a very low key way to have fun um, when you don't feel like dancing. If you don't, if it's hot or whatever, you just don't feel like, or you just don't feel like going out that late, um, but you don't just want to go have a drink and sit right that's always the biggest problem for if you're going to a lot of the bars is that it's really loud music and you can't really talk but there's nothing really to do because it's just loud music and we like going to listen to loud music but uh you want some variety and the karaoke uh seems like it's going to provide that and we've always liked karaoke right dominic and i did karaoke at our wedding um we have gone out to karaoke over the years but we never did it that much because most of the places are kind of expensive and you wait a really long time uh to get on the rotation and everything this one is so convenient and it has such a they don't even have a book that you look through that's the cool thing they come around and they just say what do you want to sing they just give you a notepad you just write on it and they just go find the song and you sing it so uh, it can lend to some, lead to some problems because you don't know exactly what version you're going to do. There's, there's a little bit of, of guesswork involved, but overall, it's a pretty cool system and a lot of fun. So if you're going to be in Nicaragua, consider karaoke. It could be a fun thing to do. And if you're going to be here in Leon, Gekitos, seven nights a week, it's very casual. No one expects you to be good. It's not like that, right? It is have some drinks and belt one out. Uh, and just a very fun, casual evening. So, 
more fun in Nicaragua. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, any comments, any ideas, get them down there in the, the that conversation gets bigger every day. It's fantastic. I love it. And uh, so many of you are looking at coming now. We've moved from about a year of people saying, huh, Nicaragua, that's, that's certainly interesting to suddenly most of the comments are people who are like, well, I'll be there in the next three to six months. And I'm really thinking of moving. And I, you know, it's a whole different year for Nicaragua here, whether it's our ch just the people who are on our channel have shifted or the channel has changed things or Nicaragua has changed things or the, I don't know, but it's a completely different thing. It's really exciting. The number of people who are going to be here, whether it's vacation or to, to test it out or cause they're moving, uh, we get, we get everything. Um, so it's great seeing all that conversation down there and finding out who's coming and hopefully getting to see a lot of you guys in person in the coming months. I think, I don't think anyone said they're coming in February, but in like March, it starts to be a number of people are like, yeah, I'll be there in March. So very cool. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. You will be discussing in the coming days the, all the problems I have with cameras and stuff uh, and why I really need the support. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and as always, share on social media. Tell your friends. Let people know about the show. Post on social media. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.